This episode of Primary and Secondary Modcast is brought to you by Nighthawk Custom Firearms. Out of the box with upgrades you need, ready for carry, duty, or combat. Hey everyone, Matt Lanfair here with Primary and Secondary. We are live. It is March 23rd, 2017. We're going to talk about helmets. Ballistic helmets. Why? Because it's a topic we need to discuss. Uh, we have uh, we happen to have a industry guest with us who's going to help us out and uh, help clarify some some concepts. We're going to be talking about what exactly they what the helmets do, what we should be expecting from them, what they stop, um, suspension systems, accessories, how to set it up. Um, also, uh, going to discuss some of the stuff that's available currently that's fairly inexpensive, that's really popular. There, that is really popular that people probably shouldn't be paying attention to unless they are just doing some dress up. So with that, I'll start out with some intros. Um, my background's in law enforcement. Um, I've worn helmets. I'm not fond of wearing helmets, but yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, firearms instructor, armorer, gun stuff, video games, social media. That's what I do. Lane Kritzer. Hey, Lane here, uh, retired law enforcement, spent a good majority of my uh, career working either in SWAT or uh, canine, and uh, also spent quite a bit of time working on what I call the dark side. So that's kind of where Matt and I met. Uh, yeah. I have a passion for shooting, passion for making sure the guys get the right type of gear, always wanting to learn more. And to kind of side rail the conversation immediately, I'm a tall guy. And so whenever I would end up doing SWAT hits into residence, I always end up being the guy that had to go down the narrow flight of stairs in the little tiny basement. And I want Joe to explain to me how to get the uh, paint transfer off my helmet from when I'd smack the top of the ceiling on the way down in the basement. So the brain bucket saved my grape of numerous times from just that terrain alone. So uh, all I gotta say about that, I'm gonna go on mute while you guys carry on. Cool. And Joe. So what's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Joe Nagy. I actually work for Team Wendy. I am the law enforcement market manager. I also handle um, search and rescue for the company. Um, so my background is um, hey, you're there. Um, so I handle um, all law enforcement, um, and my background is uh, firearms instructor, um, love to shoot, um, love to train. Um, that's really about it. Um, I don't have any law enforcement background. I wasn't in the military. Um, just have seemed to be in the right spot for uh, finding myself in the industry. So right off the bat, how do you do that paint transfer thing? Um, those are actually love stripes. Um, okay. Those are things you want to keep on your helmet. It's kind of like the, you know, a football hit. You keep that stripe. It's a badge of honor. Nice. You've answered that before, haven't you? No. <laughs> um, okay. So what is the basic expectation of a ballistic helmet? Um, well, you know, it really depends on um, the threat level that you're looking at. Um, there are threat levels for um, ballistics. There is not a um, an NIJ standard for ballistic helmets. Um, the it kind of transfers off of a the plate carriers um, and the hard armor, um, well, soft armor as well. But that's kind of it translated into that. Um, so it really is the the ability to stop. A, a direct penetration um, and also uh, fragmentation from um, something other than a direct impact from around. So, what is what's pretty much the highest caliber someone should expect to be able to stop a? Uh, and, and that's also taking in consideration the suspension. Not just the, the the shell itself. So it's a it's a really slippery slope when you go down that road um, because you have um, you've got your semi soft hard head inside of this uh, this helmet. So you take a direct impact from 
um, from what I understand in the, in the industry is that um, a direct impact being up to a 44 magnum, um, it's, you know, that's, it's not supposed to penetrate the shell. Um, but what happens is what does that do to you? Um, you know, we've all seen, you know, 44, some of us might have even shot them. Um, taking one of those to your face, um, you know, to the head, I, I, it's, it just does, uh, it does a ton of things to you versus not, not having to worry about it impacting or penetrating the shell. Um, so it's, you're kind of walking down the road of, you know, what do I expect it to do? Um, you want to expect it, you to be able to take a direct hit and, and be able to walk away. Um, but that's, that's that slippery slope you walk down. I remember seeing some tests. I think it was Aaron Cowan did one where he did a 44 and that, that pretty much just caved in that whole helmet. It didn't penetrate, but the helmet sure got caved in. Yeah. So then are modern ballistic helmets there, are they generally uh, rated for frag then? Yeah. Um, and they, and each helmet will come with a different frag level. Um, so a team Wendy helmet has actually the highest threat level for fragmentation in the industry. Um, then you look at, um, like a cry or an op score and they're, they're right, they're right there. Um, and then you start getting to the, the mid-level helmets, the, the revisions. Um, and then some of the, the helmets that are still out there is in H ACHs that have, um, that frag protection. It's just not the, the high threat level of the frag protection. Mm -hmm. So you get higher, it means, you know, you can take a, a frag closer, um, and, and at a higher speed. So. So as far as projectiles, uh, you discussed how there really isn't like an NIJ. How does that, how do you figure out the rating for that for your helmet? Um, well, there's, there's an abundance of testing that, that can be done. Um, you know, it's not like where you see on YouTube where somebody puts it on the ground and shoots at it. Um, that's never gonna, that's never gonna pass. Um, you know, a nine millimeter is going to go zipping right through it. Um, a 357 will go zip right through it because you have to have that, um, that pressure of, um, a clay or a, someone's head, um, you know, that density on the inside. Um, not that you're recommending anyone on YouTube to do that with that. Not, their no, and that, that is, that is my, yeah. that is my walk away from that is that yeah. I am not telling people to do that. Um, unfortunately we have to add that because someone's going to watch this and go, Hey, I got a great idea for a YouTube video. <laughs> it's Saturday night. Let's let's go get crazy. Um, but yeah, there's, um, so you, you do those testings based on those, um, on those requirements of the chest. I mean, of the, the hard armor, the soft armor, uh, but there is no, there is no standard for a helmet. So it's the NIJA, you know, that's the, that's the three is the, the well-known. Um, and so that's where, that's where helmets really lie. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, and it's pistol rated. Um, you know, there's, to my knowledge, there's not a true rifle rated um, where um, there's rifle rated helmets, but that's a, it's also a slippery slope where you're walking down, which is what caliber and what speed and what grain. And so, because there are so many different um, variations of like a five, five, six or a, a two, two, three or a three Oh eight, seven, six, two by 39. So, you're getting down that road. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, with various helmets, you also have various suspensions. Mm -hmm. And with these suspensions, you have different ways of having them having them fit to your to your head. What are the the various types of suspensions and what do you prefer? Well, so you go back to the original helmet, um, you know, the past yet, the ACHs that are still out in the field today. Um, and if you look at someone that's been in the military, like you guys that have, um, you know, used helmets for long enough, the standard thing for someone to do is when they put it on, they chin cup it right away, right? Because that's how they know to keep it in. Um, when the ACH uh, was getting transitioned to um, – soft um and they started moving towards uh ops core ops core started finding that it, they could do a little bit more by adding some dial a dial on the back um which i believe they call the oct dial so what that does is um that actually shoves you forward that that pushes your head forward um kind of compresses it very, very much like a hard hat 
Um, so if you've ever seen or worn a hard hat, uh, there's a dial and, and the suspension literally just pushes in and kind of cinches you into the to the helmet. So there's there's good and bad. It's much better than than what was out there. Um, but you also have um, it also pushes and, and gives you hot spots. It pushes um, all that weight is now sitting on front and back. Um, so it, it's it's a kind of a give. You're you're gaining, but you're also kind of losing some sort of ability. Um, and then one of the things that Team Winnie suspension in our celebrated for is that we changed the game a little bit because we incorporated something called um, a boa dial. Um, boa is very common with um, ski boots, um, snowboarding, even um, outdoor. And so what we did is we we use a, a steel cable that's nylon coated um, and that steel, steel cable wraps all the way around your head. So instead of cinching in the front and the back, it actually cinches around your whole head like a belt. So now the helmet isn't sitting on the front and the back of your head, it's actually encompassing your whole head, uh, very much like a gun belt, right? And I always tell this to, to departments is that you don't feel your gun on the right or left all that weight with your mags, it's because your whole hip is absorbing that weight. Same thing with this helmet. So, you know, it's just, I'm partial to Team Wendy, uh, but you know, there's that transition of where it started, um, where it still is, and what options you have. Now, when selecting a helmet for fit, how do you figure out what fits you and what doesn't? I, uh, my, my late brother-in-law, I swear his helmet was too small, but he, he was happy with it. It was, it worked just fine for him. I mean, you, you're always going to find that, that, um, the manufacturer kind of dictates what's available. Um, you know, Opscore has four sizes. We have two. Um, it's just how the, the manufacturer has made it. Um, pad selection, um, you know, a lot of different manufacturers are coming out with different liner selections. Um, you know, you can upgrade to this or it comes with this or even, um, even in a department that has, um, you know, ACHs, you can actually do um, a retrofit where you can purchase um, another manufacturer, a Team Wendy liner, and insert it into your your current helmet. So you know you're kind of making it fit by attrition. You're just you're taking and moving, and so. So actually, that's I, I took a note on that specifically. I think it was 2011, 2012. Uh, Rich Mason over at Darcy said, "You got to try out the." the team Wendy Boa. It's, it's the best he, that he's used at the time. I had an ops core though. I had to do some modifications. Are there specific ways to do modifications efficiently without breaking anything cross uh, crossing uh, uh, company lines? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, uh, I, I can talk the best about Team Wendy. Um, so, you know, we make a, a retrofit kit um, because people want to be have that customizability, um, especially in the firearms and, and uh, training industry. It's all about customization for, you know, each operator, each officer, each person that's out there. Um, and, you know, we make it so that even if you have an ops core, if you have a cry, um, if you have an ACH, you are able to kind of modulate that to you um, in, in your price structure. You know, some some departments, some people can't afford an ops core, a Team Wendy, a revision. Um, so they get, you know, what they can afford and then kind of customize that based off of that. Um, very much like an AR, right? You know, not everybody can afford a Knight's Armament or an Oveski. So you buy a middle of the road and then just start manipulating it based off of you know, what you've learned, what you like, um, and then that's really it. For me, when I got my first helmet, it was an ACH. I don't even remember what year it was, but the absolute best upgrades were changing up that suspension in the pad system, and that turned it into a completely different helmet. Far more comfortable, and I could wear that much longer than prior. It was definitely a must-have. And, yeah, I remember back on Light Fighter, talking about the various pad systems and it's, it's really cool to see how things have really progressed a lot more options nowadays than before. Well, and then also changes what, um, you know, what the liners are made out of, um, you know, there's not much you can do with a, 
a helmet. You know, the helmet's pressed. Um, you, you can change out the innards. Um, you know, it's, um, it is what it is. You know, there's not a ton of pieces, but you can make it more comfortable by, um, by changing out a few things. Yeah. Uh, we briefly discussed hey, before we hey, went Joe. live. Yeah. Hey, cool. Oh, I just, I just wanted to go back to that boa a little bit. Was there, when the, when the boa was being developed, was it more end user input that were using the suspension system to, to help interface night vision devices better or is it just designed for comfort because i know my experience with it with using night vision has been very positive but i'm just really curious what it was that kind of brought about the development of that and using the outdoor industry i'm very familiar with using the boa system in my backcountry skiing boots etc so i'm just kind of curious what kind of drove that to happen you know i actually don't know that answer um and i you know i would assume that it came um from that direct input from um, operators um, because when it was developed, it was developed with that in mind. Um, but, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't know. So I would assume that it came from direct input, you know, Hey, we, we want something a little bit more supportive and, you know, our, our team of engineers who are just amazingly smart um, went to work and, and figured out, well, you know, this is the shortcoming of what's out there currently how do you fix that? And just by, you know, kind of trial and error, they, they figured out, you know, well, we could do this, well, what's available and, and then kind of just manipulated it to that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. One thing we were discussing before we went live, which we probably won't be really getting into is just the, the fact of people taking old ACHs and cutting them up and the potential of ruining them and they, they lose their structural integrity. We don't know enough. I don't know enough, but I would just caution people with that. Do some really good research. Right, Steve? Absolutely. 100%. Welcome. How are you? Hey, I'm Joe. Good. What's going on, buddy? What's happening, brother? So let's see here. Where are we? Okay, so we've talked about suspension. We talked about th um, that. What exactly are the modern helmets providing above or greater than the old ACH or, or older? So the the one thing, and uh, it, it all started with Opscore. Um, they really took it to the new level, right? So if you look at the ACH, it was uncomfortable. Um, they're screwing things into it um, to put on lights. They're putting on, um, you know, NVGs uh, and then incorporation to NVGs. Um, so they were the first ones to um, kind of make it modular, um, be able to, you know, attach things on the outside of the helmet um, without having to destroy the integrity of the helmet. Um, so, you know, a rail, um, comms, recording devices, thermals, lights, uh, cameras. Uh, I mean, there's virtually nothing you can't put on a helmet anymore. To the best of your knowledge, is there any difference in ballistic rating? Um, yeah, uh, for sure. And it's it all goes to the frag level um, because, you know, back to the start where it, it all really started at the NIJ3 standard. Um, it, it goes to that that frag level. You start pushing it by um, making it lighter. You start you start pushing that level by making it lighter, but also making it um, more protective. Cool. Steve, anything? Not at this point. I know I came in a little late on the conversation, but uh, no I think Joe's Joe's definitely right about that. You know. What I have found in my transition through the years of helmets from the ACH, MISH helmet type stuff to the Opscore helmets to the airframes now to the Team Wendy's that I've been using for the past probably three odd years now, about three years, uh, the comfort level is unbelievable. It's, it's I, You know, personally for me, I'm going to wear it more and longer. And not have that constant take it off, take it on, take it on, take it off, take it on and off thing. I'm going to wear that helmet constantly. And for me, being a big melon-headed guy, 
you know, the fit was spot on with the helmet, especially with their suspension system, the adjustments. It made life so much easier for me to adjust as I went that to me, there was no other alternative after that. And there hasn't been, and there probably won't be. Very cool. And of course, Bill, Bill shows up and then he leaves. It's That's Bill. What, it's typical. We can't have anything nice. No, no, no he, there he is. The one thing, the one thing that I will say, Matt, that I found with, especially when I made the transition to Team Wendy Lids, was that not only the comfort level, but just the way it sat on the head, I didn't get that bobblehead effect. Especially once I started adding NVGs, you know, my IR lights, battery packs, any of those things that started getting me off kilter, making me feel like those little dashboard dogs. That was the beauty to me of the Team Wendy, besides the comfort, was the lack of bobbleheadedness. I, I personally feel it makes it a more effective helmet for me when I'm doing work with the helmet on, either in shoot houses, real work applications. It's just so much more stabilized on the head. I didn't get as much neck strain either. Real world application like today when you went on a paper route? Yes, when I was riding my bicycle on my paper route. <laughs> Finding people? <laughs> serving paper? Yes, yes, doing those weird things. Um, so speaking of modularity, speaking of all that, um, another thing that I learned about over at the at the Darcy were the Iron Forge Concepts. Is it the Sarah? Yes, Sarah yeah. Dapper's. Those seem to have taken off and then some, and I love them. They're awesome. I always have, I always have my ear pro with my helmet. It's so much more comfortable. It's a huge thing. When, when Zach first came out with those, um, a couple of years back, you know, I was, I was lucky to be part of the beta crew on those and seeing the evolution of where it went to when he, you know, kind of dissolved that and sold it or whatever he did. You know, obviously, you know, I believe it was 3M had a variation of them for their Ear Pro or whatever the case was at the time. But these were really truly the first set that I actually enjoyed using because of the way I could rotate them, keep them back out of the way. They were just so much improved over what was out there. And once they became eligible, you know, get on the Team Wendy's, it was like, oh, yeah, this is perfect. Yeah. It's a perfect fit. It's a match made. So that brings me to a question for Bill. Because he's here now. Hi, Bill. Hello. What would be your optimal setup for helmet? Mm. So <clears throat> we have a mix on the team. My guys are a uh, regional team, again, for guys that don't know me or, or know nothing about me. Um, so my guys are set up with, uh, with Cry Airframes. Um, I love that helmet. Uh, pretty damn comfy. Uh, one of the things that I didn't realize the, the benefit in the way it's, it's made is to allow airflow to vent out the top. So it uh, prevents fogging of your uh, eye pro and, um, and nods um, and watching Chuck sweat through a class with one <laughs> and <stay. laughs> fog free uh, kind of sold me on that thing. So I, I, I love my cry helmet, man. Um, it is set up with uh with the Sarah adapters, uh, and I, we, I have my, my group has Sordens, um, and it was a huge improvement when the, when the Sarahs went on versus under the helmet and you're trying to adjust pads and make space and all that kind of bull crap. Um, it, 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 I mean, it, I, the, the, the Sarahs are, dude, that is a no joke, legit improvement to a bucket. Yes. Um, and you know, you, you if you spend hours in a helmet, um, you, you notice it immediately, right? It just takes, seems like it takes some of the pressure off the top of your dome. Um, uh, it, it, they're, they're just, uh, it, it's just what's up. It's what's the way to go. Um, so anyway, I, I like the cry, man. Um, I have a, my personal one for tap rack is a, uh, is an ops core. Um, and, and that's a good helmet too, man. If it's good, I, I did uh, change out and, and uh, put all team windy uh, pads and, and harness on it. Um, just because I think that it's a better suspension system. Um, super comfy, obviously, uh, with what they got going on. And then um, I just put the Unity Tactical uh, version of the Sarah, and I think that's who bought Sarah. Um, Correct. Uh, what, do you remember what they, what, what is that shit called? I don't remember what the hell they named it. I don't know what the new name is. You know, the original Sarahs were those, and then Zach had sold those off to Team Wendy. 
or to um to uh, unity. unity whoever it was yeah 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 um anyway whatever heck unity's deal is the the nice thing about those uh and uh rich mason turned me on to these when i was down at the mvg instructor school um they take up less space on your rail, so that's kind of nice if you're running a, a light on the uh, on the helmet rail itself, or want to put any kind of accessory on your helmet rail besides just the uh, um, the, uh, the the Peltor adapters, um, which are a little bit bigger. Um, so, and then the other thing is they're a lot tighter on your head. Now they don't click on and off uh, like the Sarahs do. I mean that you you know you pull them out, you get the click, and then click them back onto your dome. Those things are always just compressing your noodle. Uh, but you get a super tight seal, particularly with the gel cups, um, and I can still rotate them back in a way. That, but it's all flex of the uh, of the arms themselves, and I don't have as much time using that as I do the Sarahs. Uh, I'm digging it. I, I think it's a pretty slick setup. Um, but there's I'm, again, I, I'm curious if after 10 hours with those suckers down, if it would start to compress your dome a little bit. But I, I'm getting that. That's a helmet accessory, not a helmet. And you asked specifically about helmets, so I got no problem with the ops core. Uh, uh, Two groups on my team uh, just got the new team Wendy's, and and that that's a legit bucket, man. As Steve said, uh, that when you put that thing on your head, it, um, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty goddamn awesome. So is one better than the other, kind of a thing, and you know, I, I guess it's some of it's head shape potentially. I mean, you know, there could be some of that you got a, a weird shaped coconut, and it just fits into a certain helmet better than others. Um, the ability to adjust all the pads around, obviously, I'm like the old school basket harness system. Uh, which fucking suck, by the way, um, you know, sit on 15, 16 hour call outs and shit like that. Those things were just brutal. Um, so, man, I, I think, you, you know, if you stick with the big three, um, the cry, the ops score and the, uh, and the team Wendy, you're going to be in good shape regardless. So, I mean, I, I would certainly take any of them. I certainly trust any of them as far as the ballistic uh, protection side of the house goes. Uh, all reputable companies, uh, you know, no concern about that one's not going to stop a bullet or, uh, you know, any of that kind of bullshit. So I, I don't really have a fucking favorite, to be honest with you. Didn't you recently also change the, like recently within the last couple of weeks, change the inner pads? Or am I, I thinking of someone else? Well, I did that on the uh, on my personal ops core. I bought a, a straight up ops core, and actually it was a guy. I think I got it off the uh, the primary and secondary supply depot, um, but it was essentially brand new. A dude, dude squared me away and gave me a, a solid deal on that. <clears throat> And so when it came in, uh, it was one of the first thing I did was was change the pads up to the Team Wendy. Uh, I thought the harness was okay, so I left that for a minute. Um, and then as I heard the Fisher there, the I mean the the stuff that bobble heads you in when you start adding nods and other bullshit on there, uh, it just the Team Wendy um, the Team Wendy harness just seems to do a better job on on, on my dome. And I, you know I like I like the way it locks down. I, it feels tight without being constrictive, you know what I mean, where you get helmet head after a while and you just kind of feel like you're getting headaches and, and pressure points being um, hit on you. And I, and I have not experienced that yet with that uh, with that system. So um, because of that, we the, the Team Cry helmets, I, we actually upgraded them to the Team Wendy pads as well um, just because I was I, I, I thought they were, it was a bitching system going into my personal hat. What's been their feedback? Since they got the oh, dudes love it, man. Dudes love it. Uh, I, the, everybody likes the cry helmets, man. Um, my guys like them anyway. Uh, <clears throat> you know, again, the, is the venting component of that thing? Is it? Is you know? Is it really doing a lot? And the answer is shit. I don't know, man. None of us have bitched about our stuff fogging up, so I guess there's something to that. But I can't say my my shit is fogged up wearing the ops core either. Um, I don't hear the dudes with the team Wendy helmets bitching about my you know my shit's all fogged up. So. <clears throat> You know, at this stage, I think those helmets, the Cry helmets now are maybe six years old, seven years old. So we're, we're coming up. We replaced Hard Armor at 10 years. Um, and so we're coming up on on a change out. And uh, my guess is the dudes, they will either stick with Cry or they'll switch to Team Wendy. Um, and if I had to if I had to lay down the dough on it, what they would want to do, they would probably all switch to Team Wendy. Now, Joe, with the Team Wendy helmets, do they already come decked out with all the, all the goodies that uh, Bill was talking about? So yeah, that's that's one of the huge benefits of of our helmet is that we, um, you know, any any guy like Bill, uh, Steve, you, you know, Matt, the you're gonna know that um, it's a system now, right? It's no longer just a helmet to stop from you getting hit in, with a with a round. Um, there's there's a, that adaptiveness of needing ears, needing a light, needing a camera for training, needing a camera for, um, for, you know, a, a 
a hostage um, incorporation of night vision. So what we do is we see that as a system, so we don't a la carte features. Um, if you look at some of the, the other uh, helmets out there, um, there, you have those. So, oh, oh, you want a rail? Oh, well, that's more money. Oh, you want a shroud? Well, that's that's more cash. Um, so we, we don't see it like that. Uh, so we incorporate, We ha everything comes with the helmet, comes with rails, um, comes with a Wilcox shroud. Uh, you know, they, they're truly the gold standard in the industry uh, for mounting of anything on, your, on the front. Um, you know, different pads, different... Um, Different liners are available from other manufacturers um, as upgrades. We give you we give you the gusto in one shot. Nice, yeah. Here, here's what it, here's no oh, go go ahead. Excuse me. Here's what it needs, Joe. And we've talked about this before. I need a rain gutter on my helmet because you know everywhere I go it rains. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've been told that you. To keep... <laughs> I've been told that you bring the rain, man. That's what I've been told. I, I, Dude. I'm on my way to Ohio now to teach, and it's going to be raining for the next couple of days. But so, having a way to divert that water coming down in our face. Dude, so, uh, again, regional team, right? <clears throat> and six agencies, six guys, everybody's buying their own crap. So one agency in particular, they had the – it was not a basket helmet, but it was that shape with the actual, you know, little brim. <laughs> and yeah. so we, we clown those motherfuckers forever until they got their new helmets. But one of the dudes would always he – would, he would tip his head ass <laughs> to, to <laughs> War service, he'd be like, "Hey, we have warrior in arrest," and then he'd, he'd give a little jaunty tip of the cap there, which I thought was goddamn hilarious. But yeah, the, so the other thing with the Team Wendy um, that I dig is is the shape of the top down, right? You feel less like like yes. fucking Gazoo from the Flintstones with, with a round, you know, ping pong ball in your dome, um, and, and they're pretty streamlined as well. So yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's clearly a bitch and fucking helmet, man. There's no doubt about it, and, and I would agree with Joe. It is. I think it is the gold standard helmet right now. So one of the things that uh, if you look at the shape of our helmet versus anybody else's is that um, we actually designed it. Uh, so look at the four of us, right? Uh, well, the five of us. Fisher's got a jug head. I've got a big ass head. Um, you know, everybody's head is shaped different. So if you look at the normal of the norm of helmet shapes out there. Um, Mine is perfect, just to be clear. <laughs> they're right. Um, they're a little bit oval. Um, not everybody's head is oval, right? So if you look at ours, it's a little bit squared um, and has that more closer uh, closer variety to a box because it allows everybody's head to, to fit in there. Um, the ops quarter does really well. Cry does pretty well in that, um, but it's kind of that it's kind of that shape, right? So everybody's head's different. You just never know who you're gonna who's gonna be wearing it. So. Lane, did you have an additional question? I saw something came up. Yeah, I just was noticing as um, guys were talking about the um, the actual liners. I know that Team Wendy offers more than just one liner system. So if Joe could go a little bit deeper in the weeds on that and kind of explain the different styles of the liners and the material so people kind of get a better idea of what's involved with that. That'd be awesome. And then just before you go on to that, I was going to mention that uh, for you guys complain about the rain, the snow, uh, those of you who know me kind of know I'm a little bit of an outdoors guy. So I have like a, a Patagonia backpackers visor. It's like super lightweight. And this is a no shit. I show up to training on sunny days and rainy days. I put that visor on underneath my brain bucket and wear that. And my boys would just look at me like I had a unicorn horn going out of my head, but it worked. <laughs> by the yeah. Adapt and overcome, right? Um, so yeah, they, we make um, we make a couple of different liners. Um, our, our our standard helmets only come one way. Uh, when you get a helmet from us, a specific, specifically a ballistic, um, it comes with our ballistic liner. So the helmet comes with sixteen different comfort pads um, with, in two different sizes. Everybody's head is different. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're all the same around; they're different. So what we want to do is, uh, you know, I always tell people it's asinine for us as a manufacturer to say. You're a large, um, so this will fit you. Um, how do we know, right? I mean, Lane, you're different than, than I am. Bill, you're different than I am. So it's crazy for me to go, oh, you're a large. This is your helmet. So what we did is we, we incorporated those different pads so that each officer, operator, anybody that wants to buy the helmet can customize their own fit, right? So um, our, our retrofit kits, we make, uh, we make two different liners. One's called an Epic Air. It's the closest thing to the, our ballistic 
uh, liner. It, it really promotes airflow. There's two channels um, just under the um, just under the liner, so you get a good airflow in there. Um, it allows you to take a center channel out if you're still running comms on the inside. Um, it comes with, with different comfort paths, so you still can manipulate your sizing. Um, and then we make an Epic Air, I'm not sorry, we make an Epic, which is one piece liner um, that, that again is an upgrade to what's available. Um, we sell, if you're looking at numbers, the Epic Air is by far the the most uh, popular, the most comfortable of the retrofit kits. Um, but for the ballistic, you don't get a choice. You just get the best. I will say, man, the uh, <clears throat> it's a good point. When I bought the uh, the cry helmets for our guys, so you measure their dome and, you know, what helmet are they in now and what size is that and shit like that. And uh, and, and so I, I got six mediums and uh, we ended up having to send three back. So I, I, even with the measurements, exactly what you're saying, it, their heads were within it, but the shape of the head and the pads that came with them, uh, the dudes were just, there, there was no way they were going to squish their domes in there. So I had to send three back, got three larges to come in, <clears throat> excuse me. And then it was... It, I mean, I like the cry helmet, so don't take me beating up on cry shit. Uh, but the, the the pads that came with it were always problematic, and it was it was almost like we were having you know a, a fucking sixth grade sleepover with the six of us. Hey, hey man, give me that little one there, and you know I'll trade you for this one, and, and trying to make it just be magically correct. Um, and, and none of us ever actually. I mean, it, you know, you, you whatever. I'll, I'll make a, I'll make a fishing bucket work if I have to, right? Um, and I think dudes just made it work. And then when we switched out. Um, to the Wendy, uh, I think we did the Epic Era retro kits for the cries. <clears throat> it's just a huge difference, man. So it's a it's a vagina on your head all of a sudden, and, and uh, I mean it's a huge huge difference with comfort and just the the the, the ability of those guys to wear it for ten hour training days and and do all that shit is is uh, it's it's pretty slick system for sure. Um, that is the one thing I hate about the Ops Core helmet is the stock pads that come with those weird foam block bullshit. I mean that is an immediate. I was like, what the fuck, right? And, and tore all that shit out. And I, I don't even think I wore that helmet once before I, I had bought the retro kit to fit in it because the pad, the system sucks so bad in it. Yeah. That's, that's so, one of the So what is, uh, I was just going to say, what is, because you, when, you, when you hear about the, the liner material, it's made of Zorbium, which sounds like a, a medication you take for uh, depression or, or God knows what, but, but, you know, for those people who don't know, guys who work, like I worked in a cold weather environment for a long time, so not to talk, bring up another manufacturer's product, but, you know, there were liners that we had in our helmets that when you pull them out of your bag to go to work, all of a sudden you're, you're putting on a, a block of ice. So what is it about Zorbium that, you know, what are the pros and cons of, of this material that's in your liner that you guys provide? Yeah, so that's actually a really good question, um, and most people don't know uh, the name of it. It's a proprietary uh, foam, so um, we actually hold the the military contract for uh, the seven pad set in every um, standard issue helmet. Um, we didn't design it; um, it was in replacement of the pasket. So the pasket for people that don't know what that is, um, it's a sling suspension helmet. Um, if you've ever looked inside or seen a, a fireman's helmet, um, it's you're literally sitting in a basket. Um, so the, the army wanted to get out of that and start using um, a different liner for protection. Um, and they, they tested a bunch. And at the time, um, Team Wendy um, had, had been making this for our skiing helmet. Um, again, for most of you who don't know that our, our company is actually named after um, our owner's daughter who died in a skiing accident. Wait a minute, did you say skiing helmet? Mm-hmm. Yep. So it started and I don't because have access to one of these. Right. Um, stay tuned. Um, so they came out with a uh, a skiing helmet um, as a as a way of remembering and honoring uh, Wendy Moore. Um, and so at the time they they had come up with a a, a proprietary foam, um, and the military was testing new foams. And uh, since since two thousand and seven. We've actually had a sole source contract for every pad set that goes in a military helmet. So what it is, is there's two different kinds of foam um, that are that are put together. Um, one is a hard uh, impact foam. Um, that is what is fitting against the helmet. And then there's a softer um, foam that fits against your head. Um, and that's that's really it. That's the that's what 
is in every helmet that we manufacture. Um, now there's, there's, um, there's some other parts of it, um, that, you know, there's a, a seal that doesn't allow for absorption of water, but still allows you to be um, in in high uh, altitude, so it doesn't swell when it when it takes on that that lock, lack of oxygen. Um, but it's just a proprietary uh, design um, that we came up with, and we've been using it ever since. It's in every one of our foam paddings. That's no shit, like remember, I, did I used to. Uh... Well, fortunate for me, right? I was already a team leader, so I'd be like, man, I'm in the front of that Bearcat, and I'd throw my goddamn helmet up on the uh, defrost vents to, to heat those bastards up in the wintertime so I didn't have to throw a block of fucking concrete on my dome. Yeah, it was uh, like a little lump fest. Um, so that's fascinating that when you say that, that you know, replacing that, uh, I think you call it a sling system, which is the old Pazgit or how you pronounce that. I remember wearing those helmets because it was a suspension, you know, you had this little kind of bast around your head and then your helmet was even further out away from it. And now you've got all this material filling the gap and it was based on like skiing technology. But does that also have an effect on the ballistic? Um, you know, we were getting into the ballistics a little bit earlier and you mentioned something a little bit about back face deformation. Does that actually have a key ingredient with that when you talk about liners? Absolutely. Yep. You're just, you're putting more of, of you on the shell. Um, so there's, you're, you're resisting that back face deformation. Um, I mean, that energy has to go somewhere. Um, so that foam helps prevent, uh, and resist that back face deformation. So, and in, in for anybody that doesn't understand that what happens with that energy, even if it doesn't um, penetrate the shell of the helmet, that energy has to go somewhere. Um, and it's, unfortunately into your head. Um, so back face deformation is how far does that, does that, the shell impact concave kind of like a car accident when you take a hit into the car how far does that energy go into the bumper or the the, the sidewall of your car um that dent that it puts into the to the frame of the car same thing is how how much of the dent goes into the helmet and that's actually a measurable um, <laughs> that's a measurable item yeah that explained it very well for everybody that's listening you know, one thing I found when I had first switched over suspension systems in my old airframe and then before I had went to the Team Wendy was not only the comfort of it, but the pads and the suspension system stopped so much of the hot spots that I knew dudes were getting. It, you know, especially the bald guys. No offense, Joe. Um, you know, or the guys that were shaving the heads down really close, whatever the case was. But the hot spots, the rubbing issues were always a big problem. That was solved for a lot of us when we switched them over to the new suspension systems and the pads. Yeah, dude, that shit has come a long way, man. I, I remember our, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we, you know, back around, uh, oh, shit, 99, 2000, something like that. Um, and we had, you know, stand the, like the old RBR helmets and shit, but kind of a, a standard kind of basket suspension system and maybe they added a top pad you know something like that um but i remember when we first switched to the organ arrow pad system which was kind of the first you know <laughs> set of set of shit you get after market and, and, and the same thing we were like holy crap this is incredibly different and it, i mean shit technology just keeps pushing right along and you know war has been good for cops as well in the sense that we benefit from the equipment uh, gains that those guys have made and, and make them our war fighters more effective uh it's also made it, the SWAT guys more effective as well so uh, yeah man that you I, i'm telling man dudes are thinking you know well is it worth the cash to, to drop on the uh on the team wendy uh retro yes. kit and i'm telling you flat out dude you save your fucking aluminum cans and and get a system and, and you will shit when you see how much difference it makes you know, you know, one of the, that's funny you say that because one of the things that I find uh, being in law enforcement, you know, the the um, crazy amount of departments that I talk to um, that, you know, they don't have a budget for an op score or a cry or a, a team Wendy because um, those are upper level. Those are upper level helmets um, where you get a, um, you know, just an old ACH and you're kind of, you're kind of at the whim of what was in it. Um, you know, having these retrofit kits of any kind, not just Team Wendy, but um, having those kits makes it where, you know, an officer that, 
or a team that can't afford those but can make them more comfortable for the department that or those guys that are wearing it on 12 hour call outs you know 18 hour call outs um, it makes a huge difference yeah man for sure I, I'm not sure a lot of dudes um, so th there's a ton of the um, um, NIJ grants and shit like that that cover armor in general uh, but I'm not sure that a lot of agencies even know that they can get some hard armor products for their cops off of grants. I mean, they they focus on the soft body armor stuff. So <clears throat> for the teams that don't, like you said, don't have a budget at all, right? SWAT is just a thing, but there's no line items or anything to help support them. Um, potentially, man, that's something you can look at with with whoever's running your uh, your armor program and see if there is some dollar set aside to upgrade your helmet. And and I don't, I, you know, I'm curious, Joe, if you have a uh, we have always gone by the um, ten-year replacement on on the hard armor items. So our helmets and ballistic shields, um, they're ten years and then they're out of service. And we typically shoot them when we're done, just kind of see what the hell we get out of them. Um, but is that something Team Wendy has too? Is it a ten-year suggestion, or, or what's your you know what's your what's your thoughts and theories on that? I don't know if you guys already covered this or not. I'm going to give you my official answer, and this is where I go official. It's five years. <laughs> um, that's that's the industry standard for for uh, helmets, um, and it's, it's usually for hard armor as well. Um, but it's for for helmets. That's I don't you know after the five years, I can't tell you. Yeah, Roger that man. Um, yeah, the, you know the ten year thing. I, I, I want to. I'm not even sure where the hell I got that from, other than I remember it was from an armor manufacturer, um, and that was their suggestion. Um, and so that's just what we've always done, man. But if you're telling me five years and that's that, if there's documentation on that, or if that's just team Wendy's stance, or is you said it's an industry thing, is there documentation along with that? Or is that just the warranty period? Or what is that? What is that? So I know what to go to tell my boss, to tell me so I can get some money to go get new helmets earlier. So when you start, when you look at the materials that they're made out of, um, and it's not, and it's not Kevlar, but like an Aramid, like a uh, polyethylene Kevlar mix. Um, that's when the, that's when it starts to degrade. Um, can it can it last longer? I can't. I just don't know. I, I don't have any testing to prove it because the, the standard is is five years. So a cry is five years. An ops core five years. Team Monday five years. Um, that's that's the standard. Similar to uh, plate armor, plate body armor, especially ceramic stuff. It's recommended to have it X-rayed on occasion is that also the same with uh ballistic helmets no because they're they're made out of different materials the ceramic um because it can take a it can get a stress fracture um and you would never see it um and that drastically degrades the the um the production level and you would never know without having an x-ray um but yeah that's they're not as delicate um cool. for helmets cool yeah we're now getting uh live questions so it's kind of nice, perfect timing. I think uh, actually, real quick, thumb out. Your uh, what you just said is is what jogged me. And it was not we. It was not a ceramic plate. It was a, a polyethylene or, or an aramid based plate. And that whoever whoever the hell company that was that that actually told me ten years for hard armor. So it was related to armor plates, not the helmets specifically. Does Team Wendy have any relationship with MTech? Nope. Okay. I've good. I've heard good shit about MTech helmets, man. I just, I haven't touched one yet. Yeah. Ain't seen one, so I have you know no idea what the hell they're about. Same thing on my level. On my end, I've I've seen like pictures, but I've never seen an actual, um, you know, tangible touching uh, helmet. I think Mike Martin had them for about a minute. And then it just was too complex and he narrowed down his product line. Um, what about any recommend? I guess this would be dependent on the pad, but someone's asking about how exactly do you clean the pads? Uh, hand wash them. Literally, you can just put them in your, in your dish sink, uh, in your, uh, your sink and just hand wash them um, with some dial soap or um, some Dawn, um, you know, just because it's not going to absorb it. Um, so it's, um, cause it's RF sealed. Um, so it's just, you're really just getting the, the stink off. And also does team Wendy sell direct? For sure. 
for sure. Oh, here's an interesting question. Uh, what level impact is cause of concern with the uh, helmet? How, yeah, how much? How much can you? From how high can what's, I jump? What's off your concern, my, yeah. right? Can, I mean, can I jump off my roof? Well, like I'm I got shot in my head. That's a concern. Of that. Is that is that like a fall impact? Is that drop on the helmet impact? Is that you know taking a yeah taking a We're round both. of the helmet? I'd probably get a little clarification, or Joe could just go crazy on that one. Yeah, I mean, it, that's that's the question is what what's your concern? I mean, my concern is I just got shot in my head. Um, you know, it's and then what did I get shot with? Um, so, um, you know, there our helmets are uh, ACH rated. There's a there's a rating for impact, um, and it's that's not uh, NIJ standard impact. Um, and there's there's a requirement to meet that. Um, I don't want to go down that because that's a long that's a long conversation. But it's really just what's your concern? Um, you know, is it a frag? I got hit with a frag, a piece of shrapnel. Um, so. I would just need more clarification in that question. You know, might as well break out the question that I'm sure a lot of people want to know. And I, I'm looking forward to this specific discussion. What about brand X? They're providing the, the same look, the same cut, but it's a fraction of the price. So I get that. Uh, that's probably the most common question I get from departments. Um, hey, we're looking at X. Um, what's the difference? So you're going to get, um, uh, quite a few things you're going to get adaptability so you look at just like a like a revision right Revision's a good company um so our helmet's going to be um versus ours versus revision um you're going to find that it's it's more comfortable um it's more adaptable on the inside it's more supportive um on the inside you know talking to bill bill knows that that when we talked about it initially, it's how it fits the officer or operator. Um, and then it's protection level. It's how much does the helmet weigh? Ounces equal um, pounds and you know, and that equals pain. Um, so it's, and then protection level. Um, what can I put on the helmet? And you know, what is it made out of? Is it a proprietary helmet or is it a Franken helmet? Um, so you look at a, um, and I get that term from like a Frankenstein uh, AR, right? You you put, um, you know, a really nice barrel in and you're taking different rails and a grip and, and it's, you're putting it together. Um, there's a lot of manufacturers out there that take, if you, and we sell them to, to different manufacturers. You'll see, um, you know, you can get uh, a cry helmet with a, a Team Wendy um, suspension in it. You can do, you can get this helmet with our, our cam fit in it. Um, so it's, are you getting it from one manufacturer or are you getting it from one manufacturer that pieced it together? So now what about all of this, uh, all the Chinese helmets, the ones that are suspected to be Chinese manufacturer, which I think some of us at primary and secondary have confirmed they are. Yeah. Um, they I know are, there's, you, it's, it's, it sure is appealing for law enforcement because it is cheap and it looks the same and yeah, it's going to stop a bullet, right? Yeah, you know, it's you get what you pay for in this in this sense, right? Do you want let's talk about hard armor, right? Do you want a an eight pound or do you want a four pound? You know, what is it worth to you for a a patrol officer that's gonna wear the helmet three times a year, um, or the guy that's gonna wear it forty times a year for ten hours a time? Um, you know, our our helmet really isn't a ops core helmet isn't really a um a patrolman's helmet it's you know it's a special officer special operator um helmet because of that because of the adaptability because of the light uh the lightness of the helmet um you know what it's made out of now didn't you say uh, you also had ex a little bit of experience with one of these helmets yeah we've we've seen them um uh, and they don't come out of the box looking great. Um, the one that I saw when it came out of the box had, um, and it was brand new in the box. It was, um, I actually cut the box open from the manufacturer, from the, the place it was purchased. Um, and the Velcro was falling off of the helmet. So if you can't get Velcro right, you know, you're, how, how well is the helmet made if you can't put a, a Velcro on? Um, so 
most of the feedback also I've heard is the uh, the suspension systems are just it's it's basic it's it's a toy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, one that'll and it's going to be heavy. Um, and it's just yeah, you know, the any of you guys know that after four hours of of a class or six hours of a call out, you just it just hurts. Um, it's like wearing one size shoe uh, that's just too small. It just it just hurts. And who knows if their ratings are what they are. Who yeah. knows if it stops what it's supposed to. Steve, yep. I hear you're making a lot of noise, like you're very upset with it. No, not at all. I just, you know, I, I had some familiarity with a possible offshore Armacore helmet um, that some people had and were using. And I, yeah, everything Joe said, 100%. We may not be talking about the same company or the same helmet, but most of those are coming from a lot of the same places and they were not satisfactory. So we're looking at what price point around 300 bucks for a shooter's cut. Is that about right? 50, I think it was somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. So if you're spending that much for a helmet, you're not buying a real helmet. Oh, and we no. lost Joe. We didn't want him anyway. That's, a, that's all right. It's Joe. Forget about him. Now we can talk bad about him. Yeah. Hey, didn't, uh, didn't <laughs> Cowan shoot one of those? Yes, he did. Helmets, uh, and, yes. and I remember the back face was fucking horrific on it. He did stop the bullet, but it was uh, your dome was smashed in, basically. <laughs> you don't need that part of your brain. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's just the left side. You know, looking like that guy from Planet of the Apes who got a lobotomy. Yep. So, but, you know, the, the, the interesting, well, you know, it's interesting, whatever the hell, but that, that, that's obviously that Team Wendy Opscore style helmet, right? That, that shape. Um, the, the Chinese shit that's coming in is obviously concerning. I, I mean, I think you're a fucking moron to buy a Chinese made helmet. Um, yeah, that style. Um, but, uh, 3M is making a helmet. Now, I don't know if they're importing that Chinese helmet and slapping their shit on it. Right. But that I mean, like 3M is a no joke American company. So my guess is they must be doing something to test those. And those are also running about 350. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, I mean, I haven't shot one, haven't tested one. Um, it, you know, it, so I, I, who the hell knows, man? Um, it, 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 there's got to be something, though, right? When the, the top three helmet manufacturers' price point is is very similar, um, th there's something behind that, man. And, and so anytime somebody comes in with a Cadillac that costs $300, I mean, you should be thinking, what the fuck is going on with this thing? And if you're not suspicious of that, then, you, then you're kind of a dumbass, man. And I guess you deserve to get a shitty helmet. Yeah. Well, it seems with people like that, they're more concerned with appearances than performance. It's all about the look and not well, actually protection. Yeah, I, you know, and, and I think Joe, Joe's point is, I mean, it's valid, right? For an organization that's trying to outfit, you know, a ton of dudes or, um, you know, agencies that are buying a helmet for the car, right, and, and kind of thing, and, and, you know, just trying to give dudes a little bit of extra protection. But Joe's right there. Those guys are rarely, if ever, going to wear that. And so then when you go, okay, $1,000, um, you know, times X number of patrol guys, I mean, that, that can get very, very expensive very quickly uh, for an equipment item that's really not going to get much use. So, I, I mean, I, I wish we could afford to buy so patrol while, guys. I couldn't, sorry, was that lame? Well, Joe's, well, no, I was just to say, well, this is a great topic because while Joe's trying to figure out how to take care of his internet bill in Ohio and get back on, um, <laughs> he kind of started, started out and he kind of went that direction, which was, uh, you know, um, he mentioned the difference between a guy that, you know, has to wear a brain bucket like all day because he's on a full-time SWAT team versus, you know, the officer is going to have to respond to a Farouk, you know, San Bernardino shooting kind of deal and slap it on. So I think while we're waiting for Joe to get back, I'd be really interested in hearing what your guys, if we were to say, let's, you know, we got lots of listeners here, majority of them are law enforcement. Let's hear what Bill and Steve think would be a prioritization of how do you prioritize a brain bucket for the first responder. You know, the guy is not assigned to a tag team, but he's got to show up on calls or he wants to be able to slap a brain bucket on there and make sure he's good. What should he be looking for priorities? And maybe some sergeant or lieutenant's listening to this and goes, okay, this is what you're getting my guys into for that. And then how, what would be Bill and Steve and, and, and Matt's ideas of what would be the, how we'd prioritize for a team that's actually looking at, you know, we need to be running comms, we need to be running, uh, you know, infrared, light sources on helmets when you run night vision, et cetera. What are the priorities or things we'd be looking at to, to put together this package? So there you go. Who's going to be first up on this one? 
Mm. So I'll I'll kick it off. It's hard to fight the budget constraints of a department in the admin. You can't fight that. Uh, it's just like body armor. You know, I was talking to one of my good buddies uh, today about this on the phone that we all love and know. And, you know, agencies will still go to the cheapest that they feel is the best within that price point. You're not going to convince them otherwise, especially when it comes down to the accountants. Well, and I agree with that. I'm just saying let's let's take let's take money aside. Let's just not let's just say what are the priorities in other words, should a first responder be looking at super good comfort, super good fit, and then kind of move that way. And now we got Mr. You know, he paid it, he got a Visa card, Joe paid his internet bill, he's all good to drive back with us. So <laughs> um, for me, man, it, it, sorry about that. For the patrol dude, right? So why not an MSA M A C H? Well, which exactly? I mean, exactly, right? You can get a, a decent a decent hat for a, a pretty damn low cost, um, and and maybe it's not. Hang on, should we bring should we bring Joe up to speed on this one now that you joined us? Yeah, sure. And then, all right, Bill, do the recap these. and then go, and then we'll kind of go from there. Bessie Lane just was asking the question about, you know, what do we think is a priority for a potentially a lieutenant or a sergeant, somebody that's listening to this thing that's trying to outfit a patrol division, what kind of priorities do you put on that guy's helmet versus what does a SWAT guy need or, you know, that 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 type of shit. That's what we're discussing, Joe. Uh, so, so, anyway, on the patrol guy side, um, a chunk of this man is uh, – and everybody in here feels this way, right? And that if I if I had never gotten on the SWAT team, for instance, right? That's just I mean I wasn't interested, or I wanted to go do something else, or whatever. I, I think that there was the 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 office, the individual patrol officer tactic shit was always interesting to me outside of SWAT. It makes sense to I me mean, how to run, where, how why are we running a felony stop this way? Where did this procedure come from? Is there a better way to do it? Um, you know, from an agency my size, where I backup for me is literally thirty seconds in most cases. Um, numerous officers on shift. Can we do this more efficiently and effectively than the standard academy felony stop? Blah blah blah. Right. So all that all that shit was always interesting to me. So because of that, I think even if I had just been a patrolman for life, that at some point I would have made the decision. I, I, I the, the head protection is important. We're getting into enough hot calls as patrol officers. Um, you know, I mean, last night uh, we had a shooting in my town. A hostage taker was killed by one of my SWAT guys who was working patrol shift. Um, you know, so the shit is happening to patrol guys as much as SWAT dudes where the necessity for a good helmet is as critical or more potentially um, than a SWAT guy. And, and so I think that a chunk of this, if I'm, if I was going to spend my own cash and I would, then I would buy a top tier manufacturer's fucking helmet um, where you know you're going to get the support. You know, if something's fucked up, they're going to take care of it and fix it. Uh, you know, you have a company that's that, that's absolutely is standing behind the ballistic capability of that of that fucking thing, and all of that comfort is cheap goddamn insurance when you're buying it yourself. Now, I get it for as Steve said, right? The bean counters and the and the the budget is what it is for an organization to do something, and and so I think it, because a patrol guy isn't likely to wear it as much as a SWAT guy. Uh, the frequency isn't there. They could probably save some money by simply buying a heavier helmet and potentially deleting some of the cool guy shit um, because they don't have nods as patrol dudes and they don't have IR lights and uh, comms and all that shit that they're going to stick on the helmet. Uh, and so a slick ACH is still a fucking good helmet and you can get those fairly cheaply and, and that's an easy way to outfit patrol dudes with something that isn't, you know, the, the shit I got issued when I joined the army in 1985 with steel pot and a fucking liner, right? They, I mean, they, they still look sharp, Let, you know, it's not the cutting edge crap, but it's not a goofy looking helmet either where you look like a dipshit. So I, I think that's what a patrol division should probably be looking at if they're going to outfit the patrol guys. And, and like it or not, man, you know, that I was kind of being a wise ass there with how it looks. But, it, you know, if I bought a dude an awesome looking helmet and it, it you know, it looks like a basket, I'm telling you, they would be less likely to put it on because they think it's some janky old shit, Right. Even if it's brand new, it doesn't look modern. It doesn't look like a fighting man's helmet. Um, and so it's going to ride around the trunk and get clunked around. And, you know, it's just not going to do shit. So you do have to consider you know, keeping the guys looking fairly fucking crisp, right? Otherwise, they're just going to say, fuck that shit and not use it, period. So now you've wasted money. So there's that. On the SWAT so, side of the house. I want to hear what other guys have to say, but just did some math for you real quick. So if you 
Bill Studman Blowers decided to pay out a thousand bucks MSRP for like the top of the line helmet ish. This is the ballpark, and it's good for as Joe said, industry standard five years. That turned out to be fifty four cents a day for you to be able to wear that helmet, which means you could have afforded to forgo one pudding cup a day pudding cup. to be able exactly. to have what you thought was the deluxe helmet. Dude, that's that is a, a single that's a single overtime shift at the construction site. Right? It's, yeah, that's, that's, a, right that's, that's two nights at the football game you know, separate duty shit for fuck's sake, man. Yeah. I just want to give, a, I want to give a numerical value there before we moved on with the rest of the guys. So there you go. One less pudding cup a day, bro. So I'm looking right now, uh, per, uh, Paraclete, which is not a, a shitty armor manufacturer by any stretch of the imagination. Their, uh, ACH looking helmet is $200 from goals. Brian fucking knew, right? So there, there's a cheap helmet. That's obviously effective. It's a reputable company, whatever the shit. So there's your patrol division hat. If you're a, if you're a SWAT dude, you know, again, I mean, and I think Joe made some valid points, right? What's the frequency of wearing the damn thing, right? So, um, quick math in my head here. I'm doing 300, 30, 40, 370 hours of training per year minimum. That's the mandatory shit where I'm wearing that fucking thing. And then 70 something call outs, X number, you know, depending on what type of mission it is, um, where I'm wearing the damn thing. And then now you send me to outside training, I'm wearing the damn thing. And so there's, there's a lot more, obviously regardless, all these, all these motherfuckers need to stop what they're ready to stop and they need to have minimal back face deformation and do what the helmet is designed to do, which is protect your noggin from, from bad stuff. Right. Um, but at a point where you're wearing the thing a ton, man, the weight component of it and modern materials and modern manufacturing, it costs money. Um, and, and so you're, Absolutely, you want to pay for that. I mean, the ounces of equals pounds shit, right? The old, the old mountain climbing stuff, the backpacking, um, is absolutely valid here, right? I, I, I mean, there is, you know, perhaps a way to sell that is is going through your risk manager and talking about, you know, fucking potential neck injuries, neck pain, loss of sick leave. Now I got to go to the chiropractor and all this shit because I'm wearing this 18 pound bucket on my dome, uh, and that can be alleviated by a lighter helmet. I think that it, a, a team that's looking forward should be buying a helmet that it is going to support them moving forward, right? So night vision becoming extremely big in law enforcement and in particular in SWAT teams. Um, if they're buying a helmet today to replace their old system or their own helmet, whatever they got, then they should be looking ahead and going at what stage will be, will we be getting night vision or upgrading from mono to binocular night vision, which weighs more, obviously. Uh, are we going to want to have a battery pack or we're going to just use a counterweight system or nothing? Um, are we going to go with helmet mounted ears? Uh, you know, what lighting systems are we going to be attaching and, and all of the other accoutrements that go with it and the shit that isn't even invented yet, right? That next year shot, we go, fuck, I need to put that thing on my helmet. Uh, and it should the helmet should be able to support it, or the company you're buying it from should be able to quickly adapt and be able to retro a helmet that's a year old to accept that new item. And the top manufacturers are going to provide that to you, right? And I was having a, a conversation today with my uh, with my cohort, and uh, we, we were talking about what do we want from a, a general law enforcement supply company, right? And obviously, we get catered by by Blue Line and and you know Adamson and all these big names want us to you know buy from their shit. And it's not where a big account, but every account counts. Um, and he gave the, the speech to the dude. He said, "Man, he goes, don't save me any dollars, dude. I'm not you know I'm not interested in pennies off of shit. I want fucking customer service that is that is top notch, and I want a quality product. So whatever you're offering should be quality shit. And if you're you know if you're if your shelves are full of garbage." and you have one cool thing, then that kind of tells me what your company's focus is. And so be cautious of that, right? I mean, I mentioned, you know, Gaul is not their shitty company, but they sell everything. So are they really a helmet manufacturer that understands what a helmet is supposed to do? Or are they cookie cutter selling you, you know, 25 smalls, 25 mediums, 25 large, 25, you know what I mean? And, and hoping something fits your, your, your people. So I, uh, to, uh, the customer service component is huge to me, man. It, you know, I, I want to be able to get a fucking response if something is broken, uh, you know, if, if shit is fucked up, if whatever. And that, I mean, you know, tough to break a helmet, but I, I mean, it, obviously shit can happen, right? And I want to be able to, to, I want that warranty. I want the customer service. I want all that crap. And so that's a chunk of what I'm paying that money for, man. So that's, that's my take on it. You know, the, the other thing real quick too, Bill, going back to, you know, and Joe and everybody outfitting an entire department with helmets for patrol division. 
you know, the other reason on the cheap is this, how many of those guys are going to forego that helmet and just forget about it and leave it in the trunk of the car and never touch it? Yeah, for sure, bro. Even on a call that would warrant it, right? Where you'd want them to put yeah. this motherfucker on their dome and putting it on their head. So, uh, you know, and I think that goes to the aesthetics piece. You know what I'm saying? The helmet has to look yeah. modern. It has to look right. Uh, you know, it can't be It can't be in some ancient shit. And, and I'm not saying that about the ACH. I think it's still um, a sure. modern enough helmet. It's, it, you know what I mean? That, that dudes would pop it on their dome. The other component is a, a cop that is issued an ACH slick as is. Well, he, that mean, it's pennies to buy a rail system for that, right? It's pennies to to add shit to that system, and now he can kind of customize it and modernize it and do what he needs to do. Uh, and and instead of spending a thousand dollars, you know, he can kind of trick a helmet out for a couple hundred for his needs. Um, and, you know, simple as that. Dude, I see. You know, it's crazy to me, man. Those I see a lot of teams getting that shit, and they and they had their old and they're drilling their old helmets and doing shit to add night vision bits to it, and it's just fucking crazy, man. You you, you know. God damn it, dude. Buy the right shit for what you're trying to accomplish. It's frustrating sometimes. I think that was one aspect that you just brought up about the ACH and outfitting it. That's that's really appealing with the modern ones, with the higher end ones, is that they're ready to go. They already have the accessories that you want. The Team Wendy's already have the pads, the suspension, the rails, everything that you need. You don't need to add to it. So that right there would be a, a, a great selling point. And considering some admins I've had to deal with, They'd be absolutely clueless about that. Right, Lane? Oh, is it my turn? I thought we were going to let Joe give his opinion on how agencies could prioritize a dude who's just running patrol versus, you know, a, uh, a guy who's got to wear a brain bucket all the time kind of thing. Um, yeah, so it, it always depends on how the, the department, uh, procures, um, you know, do you, does it go to bed? Do you, can you write it so specific that you can't, they can't walk you out of the room that you put them in, um, being the department. So, you know, as a SWAT team, um, uh, in procurement, how do you do it? Do you need to write a spec or do you say, is your department so awesome that you just go buy this and they go, cool. Um, Cause I've run into departments that do that. They're, they just, their police officers get what they want. Um, and I've had departments where they say, this is what we want. And they put it out to bid. And then somebody in finance who has no clue um, has never spent a day on the job has never, probably never been uh, in the police department says, but I found this on, you know, X, Y, Z for $200. Let's just buy them those. Um, so it, it all just depends on how the, the department procures um, and, and what level they put in regard their department. I mean, the officers, right? So um, it, I've seen, I've seen everything from where it's, it's carte blanche to they have to buy and steal and beg and borrow and to get, you know, uh, an ACH um, because I, and I've seen departments that are running out of date gear and they, and then the city knows it and it's like, how can this happen? Um, so it, it's just, my argument is always this, what's your head worth, right? You get, even if it doesn't go through or, you know, whatever, it's just, what's your head worth at the end of the day, the controls everything. So, you know, my best friend is, uh, is a, is a, officer in a, uh, in Strongsville, Ohio. Um, and he has a, a ballistic helmet in his trunk. Um, he purchased it. He purchased a team Wendy. It's probably cause he, I work there, but, uh, but he's has the smarts to say, listen, the day might come where I have to put this on. He carries hard armor in his, in his trunk. It's his, um, uh, because the day might come where he has to go in somewhere alone and he wants to make sure that he's safe. And it's, and it's, it's one pudding cup, you know, it's that, well, what is this going to cost me over the longevity if I never use it, but the day that I do, it could save my life. So. Yeah. You brought up a good point. That is that, you know, we need to recognize that there's agency purchases and there's individual officer purchases and there's these individual officers out there that are really focusing on doing a good job and they are willing to put their extra money into buying a product and just like Bill said, it's got to be a good product that's good customer service, etc. And to be prepared to go out to the job, which, you know, it may be a, 
um, a low frequency but high intensity kind of deployment that they go on and so they decided to go ahead and commit to putting you know buying a ballistic helmet that they normally would expect you know maybe maybe 80 percent of the rest of the law enforcement community says hey agency buy it for me but yet this your friend said no i'm going to get that and have it because you know it's worth it to, to that individual officer so now those are some really good points on that um Steve, you got any points on uh, prioritizing little features? I mean, I, I, I guess along with that, I mean, not only just, you know, prioritizing, you know, how much money we spend, et cetera, but what are, you know, I would look at it as a, knowing that, you know, the shell of a helmet is pretty much just pistol rated based on velocities, et cetera. I would probably look at, you know, as a patrol officer, I might just be saying, hey, I want to make sure I've got something that's comfortable and fits well versus the SWAT team member has all the features to be able to mount all the products on there. So, so Steve-O, what, what would you do as far as priorities? Uh, obviously the helmet. I would then go secondary to EarPro. Do you have integrated EarPro with it? Especially if they can hook in their comms to it with their patrol radios. And then after that, I would be looking at some type of identifier, you know, either IR patch or whatever the case is, a chunk of Velcro on it that these dudes can throw something on to separate them from everybody else. Where would you get such a which, where would you get such a patch like that? Spartan Village. Uh, Spartan <laughs> Village. There it is, right? I, I mean, something, even if it's their 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 badge number, patrol number, whatever it is for that particular car or whatever it is that they're setting up the helmets for. But some type of identifier, so when the rest of the cavalry does show up, and if it's a SWAT team showing up, and it's a standoff, and the dude's been in the dark for a while, and he's hanging out there, they'll pick him up under their NBGs. You know, something to separate him from just a dude with a gun. But honestly, the lid and the ear pro, that's, that's what I'd be after at those points. Yeah, and for uh, dedicated SWAT teams or SWAT team guys, what would you go with, Steve? So, obviously, all the good stuff, the NVG mount, the comms, an additional either IR light or white light on the helmet. Um, are they running remote battery packs for their NVG stuff? You know, like my helmet is set up with a remote pack. I've got the Land Warfighter pack uh, because I may be doing some rural stuff, most likely, that may put me out and about for quite an extended period of time. And I don't want to be just changing out a single 123 after umpteen hours or temperature fluctuations whatever the case is. So a good way to mount that other guys may just choose to go the counterbalance weight. Uh, it, it's unlimited man. tactical helmets, especially like the Wendy are the dress up AR 15 of the helmet world. It, it's unlimited by your imagination or really what you need. I think it's most important that uh, we start <clears throat> Quantifying everything by pudding cups. Pudding cups are legit. Yeah, it should be the it should be the moniker for um, for dollars. It yeah. Be. Mm -hmm. At I the agree. end of civilization, you can actually trade, you know, food or beer or even gasoline for a pudding cup. Mm, butterscotch. Mm. You went too far. Too far. Never. There. Never too far. I mean, you know, prioritizing a helmet, though, is going to depend on the dude and what his, what his role is. That That's the beauty of those helmets now. You know, but, that, but that's really it. It's what does that dude need? On, on Steve's point there, there, and I don't remember the company, but there was, a, it was like an elastic headband um, that you mm -hmm. basically slapped over an ACH. On one side, it was like bright yellow police, and then if you flipped it, it was... <laughs> it was uh, reflective police you know what i mean so i remember those yeah it's, i mean so for a patrol division if they're trying to get guys you know set up i mean uh, you know steve's talking about the, uh, the uh, iff for for ir and, and that kind of jazz uh, but just the reflective side would also show up um to give dudes something you know what i'm saying uh, I, don't know. I mean whatever yeah I, i'm down with the home depot like uh mailbox decals they'll work <laughs> Someone just mentioned the 3M helmets are made by Ceridine. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. Well, Ceridine's been, aren't they the makers of Sappy? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I've been around a long time. Um, it, it's it's that, that price point on that helmet is crazy, though. I mean, it's, it, it, I was almost like, man, I'm not sure what you got here. Uh, one of our uh, groups you know, was doing a T&E on one, and I was like, man, I'm not sure this is this is what you want. But I also want to clarify it just so people are aware, this is not Cyberdyne who made the Terminators. Just so oh. you know. These are important facts. Okay, so where are we? No new questions. So what are things that people need to look at when they're looking at a helmet to, tr to avoid that crap? How do you tell if a suspension is a good suspension? How do you, are, are there, is there anything that you guys have found that, that is a, basically a red flag saying, yeah, this isn't any good? Made in China is, is one. pretty much it yeah I mean the what I would tell you is just I mean it, it all goes down to what you can afford and then and then kind of adapting to that you know so I, there's anything made in the United States is going to be a good is going to be a good starting point it's just where do you where does your where does your, your pocketbook or department allow you to to get um, and then you know is it complete out of the box or do you have to make modifications to it now, to the best of your knowledge, are all the major or the big three providing a, a complete solution like Team Wendy? They are not. Um, oh. I know that um, Obscore makes uh, a complete, um, and they give you options to do upgrades. Um, I know Cry makes, uh, when they sell the, their initial helmet, it does not come with rails. Um, that is a that is an, an added uh, part, um, and I know that they do not sell shrouds. You actually have to um, find those somewhere else, you know, a TMVC or a, um, a Botash or a Gauls or wherever they, they sell them. Um, but, and then you have to put those in separately. And so right off the bat, aren't they, aren't the big three basically at this about the same price point, except mm -hmm. for Team Wendy's just providing all that? Yeah, okay. And again, Mason said, I don't, I don't think I said this before, but yeah, Mason was also saying, yeah, these are team one. These are, are ones you need to be paying attention to. Just good dude. Yeah. I think when we bought our cries, I think we even, I think we might've even had to order them with either one hole or three hole. Cause we, we did have to put our own shrouds on. I don't know if they're still doing that or not. Since the one holes have kind of gone the way of the Dodo, but, um, but yeah, I would, you know, here's the other thing too, is my, uh, I get, for whatever reason, the the cry helmet compared to my ops core and the guys that have the team Wendy's, uh, my NVG adjustment up and down on the cry, I can't get it. I can't get the same level of adjustment. Does that make sense? And I don't know if it's the shape of their helmet or just how the uh, how the mount went on there. Um, but I, I can't get it as high, for instance, as a team Wendy helmet. Is that, as far as like your night vision adjustment, is that just in general use or is that also under wearing a gas mask? No, nah, so, I mean, I, I can, obviously it, I can adjust it properly, right? But, but prior to getting everybody RMRs for, to just shoot through the night vision versus go to white light and, and go underneath to find irons, uh, we were intentionally riding them fairly high so that we could look under the knots easier, you know, when you're picking your pistol up kind of thing. And uh, a buddy of mine with the team, when we were like, man, there's clearly an adjustment issue with this shit. But now, I mean, we're, everybody's got RMRs in their pistols. Um, so it's a, it's a non-issue. So I, I mean, I can get them adjusted properly, Lane, uh, with, with and without gas mask, uh, but there is some um, uh, adjustment height that is that is limited by where the, how the cry is, at least how mine is cut to, to um, where, my, where my night vision is in the mount. Any new developments on the horizon that you're that anyone's allowed to talk talk about that you're aware of with helmet technology? So one of the things that um, you know it's always trying to to push that boundary of of weight, um, and that's that's really it. Weight to protection level. Um, you don't you certainly don't want to give up protection level to to uh, to give up weight. Um, so you know it, it when they're 2.6 pounds as a complete helmet um 
it's where are you going? You know, I mean, how far can you go without giving that up? Um, and then it's the um, then it's the face protection. So that's the next level, and um, where um, you know more SWAT as I'm as I'm meeting them and and talking with them, or or even being involved with uh, callouts for riot um, and uh, so the civil disturbance um so you need you know a ballistic um uh protection on the face where you know it's a visor where it's nothing you've ever had or a mandible um and a mandible is something that, that covers and protects your your jawline um for a breacher um you know or that they're the first two men on the stack um you know so it's it's that that protection level are you how far are you going to uh protect and in what areas you know where it used to be you just run in a room and and that was you were, you were the first man in and that was it um and now it's you know you're the first man in well we need to provide or i need i need to buy a little bit more protection for my for what's important which is my face you know i can't see i can't i can't work um so well, look at bill he, he's going to be retiring soon that modeling career will be over. That's a good point, man. You got to, you got to keep it looking, keep it looking fresh. No doubt. <laughs> He's a hand model, dude. He's a hand model. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> Wait till he grows a beard. <laughs> so, uh, reduction in weight and just better coverage are the directions. Oh, that's cool. I'd be also interested in with the additional, with those two directions, how it also works in conjunction with gas masks. Yeah, I, we, uh, I don't remember who the fuck makes that mandible goddamn thing. Um, is it Revision that makes some kind of a shit that is an aftermarket slap on your face thing? I think so. Opscore and Revision make one currently. Actually, I think it was the Opscore one because it was uh, one of our master breachers had an Opscore at the time. He's a Team Wendy guy now. Uh, but we fucked around with that. And we were thinking, well, that potential for the breachers, uh, both explosive and ballistic, because you tend to get some shit back in your face um, and just outfit those guys uh, with those things from the giggle. But you're right, the weight of them, they're, you know, they're kind of cumbersome. It's harder to shoulder your rifle. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, if you guys can, can crack that code, that, I would bet you that's something most guys would pick up. Um, but, yeah, it's a tough one, man, when you to do everything that you want it to do, right, be able to, to shoot effectively, see everything, not fuck with your down peripheral um and provide you with a decent level of protection um it is probably it's probably very hard so you know i don't know it doesn't seem that fucking hard to me i don't know what you guys do all day over there at the team wendy factory but fuck's sake get on your jobs man oh that's why we have really smart engineers i will say man in my uh it is it is interesting to me um you know, came, came on SWAT in 1995 and the advancements in so much shit and, and helmets obviously being one component of that, the, the crap we started with and just across the board, the whole helmet period was heavier than shit. The suspension systems blew ass. Uh, no, no way to get any kind of, uh, of accessories, you know, put on that thing. Um, you know, and then incrementally over time, it's just gotten, you know, just easier to attach shit, easier to customize for the guys using it. Um, you know, it just, it, it's been pretty remarkable. And some of the, I mean, I don't know if we're moving on to advancements in, in helmets period, but, uh, you know, it's just some of the shit that's coming out um, on the night vision side is, is goddamn amazing uh, that we're putting on them now. The, the uh, is it core survival that makes the Hellstar six? I think that's the name of the company, but that new F2 IFF is badass with the, uh, um, it's got a sensor on it that tells you when you're being lazy. And then it also buzzes in your fucking head. I mean that that is some crazy shit, dude. That's like RoboCop crap. You know what I mean? It's it's uh it's certainly not nothing that I expected to see or or even was even thinking about as a brand new SWAT guy, you know, over 20 years ago. And uh and it's it's pretty cool to watch, man. It's it's pretty badass to watch my dudes be outfitted the way they are, um, and, you know, and and really the the gear doesn't even affect them anymore. It's just it's you know they put the shit on it and it feels like a ball cap and, and a fucking fishnet tank top. I I wouldn't know what that's like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was wondering if everybody took that up. So everybody's down their head. Yeah. Well, what the fuck did he say? And and don't forget the BE My Myers Mall. Mm. If you shine it at a house a couple couple hundred meters away, it will pop all the popcorn in that house. It's that powerful. <laughs> 
Yeah, man. I, it, you know, it's, it, yeah, it's it's a trip, dude. So I, I mean, I just had I just bought fucking Hellstar sixes, and then that F two came in. I was and then it's just like ah, is this, you know, just cop really need that shit, and and then talking a little bit to Chuck and a little bit to Rich Mason, and uh, and they made some good points. So uh, you know, it, but of course now I'm fucking broke, right? I already, already threw my wallet out at IFS, so I have to wait a year at least to, so the chief forgets he bought me some shit already. But I mean, it's just shit like that, right? You buy something, the next thing you know, some badass new thing is coming out, and you know. You're in, you're in your cycle kind of a deal. Uh, one thing, man, on the patrol side, the other thing that I see, though, a, a lot of, man, is uh, you, know, you sort of look at it and you go, well, fuck, we got 100 patrol cops, right? Not even a big agency, but that's that's pretty normal mid-sized agency, 100 patrol cops and $1,000 for a helmet. No, that equals X amount. Oh, sweet Jesus, what are we doing this now? The other thing. Um, and I, I don't know why the fuck we can't do this better in law enforcement, but you look at it and you go, okay, well, Joe just said it's a five-year fucking shelf life, right? So we buy 20 this year, 20 next, 20 next, 20 next, 20 next. And in five years, everybody in the patrol division has a helmet. And the next year, we buy 20 more to replace the, the ones that are now five year fucking years old, right? Uh, and so the expense is less, and you just have to forecast it. Um, you know, and then, and then unfortunately, you're going to have to tell, you know, however the hell you want to do it. And it, part of the easiest thing is that the 20 seniorest guys in the patrol division get the first fucking 20 helmets. So, you know, you don't get much for seniority, but by God, you're going to get a helmet first. Um, and then you just start breaking it down from there. So the newest guys get it last, but eventually everybody's got a fucking helmet. And, you know, if you sit around and twirl your thumbs and go, where well, are we going to come up with $100,000? Well, you're never going to fucking come up with helmets for a patrol division. So start somewhere, man. Buy a few of them now. Put them out there, and uh, you know, and, and just get cracking on the shit. It, it, it sometimes it just blows my fucking mind. Sometimes that it, 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 we make it way more difficult, and, and maybe to be fair to everybody, and we don't want to give one guy one and not the other. Well, fuck, man. You know, dudes get it. I, I mean, you know, they run a household budget. They understand sometimes you get every, every kid doesn't get the bubble gum. Fuck's sake, man. Do something. Or a pudding cup. But with that in mind. Uh, be smart about what you're buying and don't be buying this generic Chinese crap that's being touted as something that's actually reputable. Mm. Well, anyone have anything else to say? Where's Joe's dog at? Okay. I miss his dog. You'll see her this weekend. Awesome. <laughs> No, I, I got a motor, so what I was going to say is uh, I spent uh, the month of November and December, I was teaching a, a, a SWAT dog class here locally, and we were spending a lot of time, you know, working on our night vision and doing a lot of work with guys, and, and I managed to get my hands on um, a bunch of demo or sample helmets, and these were, these were and Joe could probably go a little deeper in this after I leave, but these were actually pro tech helmets that actually had the team Wendy liners in them and the team Wendy suspension systems on them. And, uh, as I, you know, I had my cry helmet, et cetera. And our guys showed up with like PSDT helmets, et cetera. But it was amazing how, when we started going in and spending, you know, eight hour days and 10 hour days doing our, you know, working these, uh, in the dark area under a green screen with dogs, Every dude that could get his hand on that helmet that had that team Wendy suspension, that BOA suspension system, when they were running night vision, they just wanted it. They grabbed it and they threw it on there. And I mean, you had to like pry it out of your cold, dead hands to use it. And, and even me, you know, I had a different helmet, obviously with a different suspension system. Every once in a while, I'd walk over with my set of, you know, binocular night vision. I'd grab that helmet with that suspension system so I could slap it on and use it. So I felt nice and comfortable too. So, you know, that's just. This is the proof in the pudding right there that, you know, that, that whole concept behind that, you know, using a, a, a ski snowboard compression system where it's a little cable buckle that has a quick release that takes that cable and it just kind of compresses nice and easy like a boa constrictor and puts it on your head. I mean, every time I took those night vision and slapped them down, I didn't have to worry about my helmet tilting. I didn't have to worry about my nods flopping down out of the way or banging into my uh, eye pro or anything like that. So so I, I was a big fan and it took me a while, but I got around to getting a hold of Joe and I asked him a couple of questions about, Hey, I'm going to ready to upfit my, my helmet. Am I getting the right size for this team Wendy suspension system? So, so I'm sold on it. I'm super happy with it. Uh, I learned a lot tonight, getting a chance to talk with Joe and just ask him a couple of questions, learning about, you know, again, the whole, the, the, 
whatever the hell the xylitol or whatever <laughs> the material is and how that works. But uh, I appreciate him taking the time to, to get that information and again, get this information out to everybody so they can learn about it. So that's all I got to say. And with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and punch on out guys. So you guys have a good night. We'll see you later. See you later. Bye, Lane. See you later. Later, Lane. So it, it, I, I hit a little bit on the, uh, the customer service and guys are, I think they immediately think about if something breaks and I even said that myself, right? What if there's a, an issue? What if the, whatever the fuck, right? The, the Velcro is not sticking, whatever the fuck. Yeah. I mean, and, but that isn't the only component of customer service. And, and so I brought up, well, here's an ACH at Gauls, but the person you talk to at Gauls, do they really know fucking helmets? Does that make sense? And so a chunk of the customer service, when you go to the, the big three manufacturers is those motherfuckers know armor because that's all they do is that, you know what I'm saying? So their ability to talk to you about necessity and, and what you need and sizing and all that kind of shit is obviously going to be increased. I mean, Joe clearly knows helmets, you know, better than the, the lady at Gauls when you call the 1-800-GAULS number, you know? Um, and, and so there is some value in that of talking to dudes that, that actually get it and, you know, uh, Everybody, you know, I keep, you know, the industry has got this and that, you know, the, the, the tactics and gear and gun industry. But I'm telling you, man, everybody I've met actually gives a fuck about what they're selling and who they're selling the shit to, right? Um, and, and so I think the other thing you get from a big manufacturer and, and a, a, a reputable company are people that are not only experts in the field, but they actually give a fuck about the welfare of the people they're selling this shit to. Uh, and so they're not going to steer you wrong. You, you know, you're not going to get junk and garbage. Um, uh, you know, and I, I don't know Joe obviously very well, but uh, my guess is if an administrator called and said, I'm trying to outfit a patrol division for 500 helmets, I can't afford yours. Joe would probably say, then hey, man, here's an option for you, man. You might need to look at this to actually get ballistic protection for your guys' heads. Uh, and, and that's a huge difference, I think, than a company that would just say, well, well, hold on. We, we got the super sale model here that we can square your way with. Um, and so there's some value in that, man, right? Just talking to, to dudes that know what the fuck their, their, their business is about and, and giving a shit about the guys that are, that are actually wearing the crap in harm's way um, it is worth its weight in gold to me. So, uh, you know, something else to consider. And uh, again, the, the individual patrol officer, man, it's, uh, and Joe nailed it. What is your fucking head worth, man? And, uh, you know, I, I would bet you there ain't, a, there ain't a, a spouse out there that wouldn't eat ramen and fucking hot dogs for a month so that you could get a fucking proper helmet to protect your ass. Um, and we can have steaks later down the road kind of a thing. So do, if your agency ain't buying a man, then, 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 then fucking buy a helmet and, and, and carry that shit and use it, man. Use it. That's the big deal. Yeah, you know, the other thing that I like too is that I have seen Joe and the other crew at classes. You know, they've been there. They've talked to the guys. They've brought stuff out for dudes to use and show. They've taken time to answer questions, you know, even if they miss a run on something, you know, I can't count the number of times I've seen these guys down at the shoot house in Alliance, even if it's just flat range stuff, but they're out there, they're taking feedback, they're getting information from dudes. And that's not something you're going to get from 1-800 big, big box. You know, to me that, that says a fucking lot. So one of the things that, uh, you know, I'm not, and I don't know how to sound, say this without coming off like it's, it's, uh, I don't know. So the thing that matters the most to me is for my work, it's, you know, it's selling helmets, but it's, it's after it happens. Right. So if something ever happens to someone's helmet or cause it's a, I mean, some, it's, it's a man-made thing and, and things, stuff breaks. Um, you know, this is not soccer mom or, you know, uh, Joe weekend um, wearing them. I mean, there are people that wear them that that buy them that might never even use them. But it's the guys that I talk to on a daily basis that if something happens, that's the most important thing to me is getting it figured out, getting it squared back away. Um, because you know maybe they they dropped it, maybe you know somebody slammed a, the door on it and and it broke something. You know who knows? But that's that's what I care the most about, um, and that's what I know for a fact. And and. Uh, it's not just team money, but it's, it's what we all should be striving for is making sure that we have um, the best customer support for the people that are buying our products, especially the people that are um, listening to this, right? It's, this is a ballistic helmet. It's meant to, to do something very specific. Um, and those are, those are no joke circumstances. So it's really all I have to say about it.
I think those are good things to say. And like what Bill said earlier, that really struck a chord with me was the those cop shops that really all they serve up is crap. And they might have one or two good things and there's, yeah, you don't have that service. Shall we wrap it up? <laughs> yeah. Um, so last thing I want to tell you guys, uh, for everybody listening is if you guys ever need anything, uh, questions about helmet, um, questions for me, um, uh, you know, my, my Facebook, my email address, um, you know, I can link that somewhere. Um, uh, just reach out to me. Um, and if, if your apartment's looking at helmets and they can't afford them, let me know. I can always point you in the right direction or things that I would suggest, um, uh, things not to look for or things to look for. Um, so just, just let me know whatever you guys need. Um, if you guys ever just want to go shoot and let me know. Um, but yeah, anything you guys ever need, just give me a shout. If I can't do it, we'll figure out a way that we can. So also, when stuff comes up either on our forum or on any of the Facebook groups specifically about helmets, we're able to to link you or to, yeah. to tag you to include you because it's nice to have industry professionals that know what the hell they're talking about. And we don't need to rely on people to to to, to guess or to just say what they think looks cool. No, we need results. This is this is real world. Yeah. I'm tired of people. That's others to it. <laughs> So, Steve. Yes, sir. Any closing remarks? Where are you teaching th this week? Uh, I am at, uh, yeah, <laughs> where haven't I been this whole month? Uh, I will be at the Alliance Police Training Facility this weekend. Doing a little uh, home defense class for all the peoples coming in. And it's going to be a good time. Hawaii of the Midwest. I think, yes, I think, I think Joe's even showing up to come get his gun on for a while. And so the the staff at the Hicks already know you're coming? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah, that was that was kind of cool, going there, staying at the Hicks, and they already know who Steve Fisher is. Oh, yeah, they should know. Yeah. Uh, it's been a lot of years there, a lot of years at that place. It's been a lot of changes for good and better. <laughs> and Bill? Uh, I'm uh, this month I'll be at TTPOA. I'm doing uh, two shield classes uh, at the uh, conference down there. Uh, and since you mentioned it, the uh, it, one of the a helmet is an integral part of being a good shield user because uh, you got to sink yourself into the viewport to get peripheral. Uh, I, I typically make them do the DT shit uh, slick, right? Just because the shields would get heavy after after two days of holding them. Uh, but I always tell them, I said, man, somebody's going to get busted in the fucking forehead. So you got to sink your head against this thing, right? Blah blah blah. And I mean, everybody, some doesn't, and they'll they'll throw a strike on the shield, and it'll tilt back and smack them in the head. So there's another thing you need a goddamn uh, good helmet for. So um, down there doing that, and then I have I'm doing a, uh, a closed course for an, uh, an organization that bought malls. So I'm going to give them a two day uh, mall update in May, and then a basic SWAT school in May as well. The SWAT one is close to military law enforcement. That will be in Washington. May first to May fifth. Yeah, that's actually oh. almost almost full too, right? I mean, that, I, I think it's so. pretty goddamn fast. So, yeah, well, I was, that's Bill Blowers. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know the TTPOA thing. Uh, I, you know, as much as guys bust my balls about ballistic shields and shit, um, I, I was I'm happy to see that both those classes filled up though. So it'll be it'll be nice to meet some Texas coppers and show them how to run that shield around and, and run the pistols with the shield in their hands and that kind of thing. So pretty looking forward to that. And the whole networking is awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it goes hand in hand. So, you gonna be? Is Team Money got a boot down there, Joe? Um, not this year. No. We uh, just I, the the literally my my year filled up so fast, and I just I couldn't do it. Gotcha. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I got going on the next couple of months. Do you want to quickly say you said something about Europe? That some some cops or our fans. Oh, yeah, I got the uh, <laughs> I got word that the goddamn uh, the German national SWAT police are, are fans of the PNS video. So that's that's kind of cool. We're getting reach all the way over to over to Deutschland to mein Brutus. Bill Blowers worldwide. <laughs> Still waiting on that goddamn helicopter though, so I don't have to drive my everywhere like Fisher. I'm gonna get a helicopter someday. Probably be an old ass Man. or something. <laughs> And Joe, 
any any closing remarks anything anything's coming up uh your your next concert dates um no i just start traveling again um the next thing i go to would be a uh ads event which is one of our distributors but um other than that i'll start hitting the uh the tactical office associations as they come up and uh but yeah anybody ever needs anything just give me a shout cool hey yeah and and you're in the uh the primary and secondary facebook groups Mm -hmm. we 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 use you as needed yeah cool well thanks for joining us. that's how i appreciate it yeah um, it's cool because, uh, I think it was Jeff Carpenter gave me a list of topics that we needed to cover. And this was on the very top of the list and yeah, this is important stuff. And a lot of people don't completely understand what's involved in helmets They're They don't exactly understand what quality means. And just like everything else, yeah, there are tears, there's, there are knockoffs, ripoffs, and then there's the real stuff. So, um, that should, that should do it. You should, you, should, um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. You can find us at primaryandsecondary.com. We have a form at primaryandsecondary.com slash form. We have 736 different Facebook groups, all starting with P ampersand S hyphen and then whatever. There are a couple also knockoff versions of those too. Um, obviously, we are on YouTube and we are also, also on iTunes, Instagram, Twitter, Stitcher Radio, and Google Play. Feel free to subscribe, give us a like, spread the word. If you found any of this helpful, please spread the word because that's what this is about. We are trying to spread good info to people that need it. And uh, from my background in basically the middle of nowhere law enforcement, information like this is near priceless. So help us out by spreading the word. Not sure what our next show will be, not sure when it will be, but Hopefully we will do it soon. So we'll talk to you soon.